SpaceX CEO Elon Musk recently shared his thoughts on the Starship Super Heavy launch from Boca Chica Starbase, Texas, and Musk expressed satisfaction with the outcome, stating it meant or slightly exceeded his expectations, and was relieved to find that the pad damage was absolutely minimal and could be repaired quickly, and the hole underneath the uh, OLM is actually filled up now, and Musk elaborated on the vehicle's impressive structural margins as well demonstrated by its ability to perform somersaults end over end near the end and remain intact. Absolutely crazy. And he estimated that the pad would be ready for another launch in approximately six to eight weeks. That's Elon time. Remember that the most time consuming aspect of preparation will be requalifying the flight termination system, which took longer than anticipated to rupture the tanks. And during the launch, the AFTS, the Automatic Flight Termination System, took around 40 to 50 seconds to kick in. Musk also revealed that three of the engines were intentionally not started, resulting in the Super Heavy Booster lifting off with only 30 engines instead. Now, these three engines were deemed unhealthy for full thrust and were consequently shut down. At T plus 27 seconds, SpaceX lost communication with the rocket due to an unidentified energy event. An explosion caused damage to the heat shields of engines 17, 18, 19, and 20. And despite this, the rocket continued on to T plus 62 seconds with his engine still functioning. Now, thrust vector control was lost at plus 85 seconds after the launch. Now, Musk noted that a rock tornado occurred during liftoff, although there was no evidence to suggest that it caused any material damage to the engines or the heat shields during this flight. He emphasized the importance of this launch as it allowed SpaceX to move on to a significantly improved Super Heavy Booster 9. And after the AFTS activation, the ship didn't attempt to save itself. Musk stated that the primary focus for the next Starship launch would be ensuring thrust vector control is maintained with Booster 9. He also mentioned that more steel would be placed under the launch tower to prevent future debris-related issues which were described as a sandstorm-like occurrence. Now, unexpectedly, the concrete under the launch pad was destroyed. That's that whole concrete hurricane tornado, rock tornado thing. And Musk speculated that one possible explanation could be that the sand actually underneath the concrete compressed to such an extent that the concrete bent and cracked and made that tornado. So let's take a quick break from the Starship launch. And I'm going to ask you a question. And please leave a comment down below. And I want to have a discussion about this. I want to hear what you have to say. When do you think SpaceX is going to be ready to launch the Starship again? I think it's going to be important for the community to discuss this. But also, we need to get our ideas out there. And we also need to know what's practical and what's not practical. Because Elon Musk, we all know what Elon Musk time is. And when he says two weeks, three weeks, uh, sometimes that happens to be two months three months, a year and a half, you know, something like that. So I want to know realistically and not optimistically, but realistically, how long do you think it's going to take before Elon Musk and SpaceX get Starship back on track to launch again? That's with the uh, stage zero. That's with the FAA. That's with booster nine. And that's with whatever ship they're going to put on top of it. Do you think when do you think they're going to be ready for the next launch. This is going to be an awesome conversation, and I can't wait to uh, hear all of your input about this because it's going to be it's going to be all over the place. It's going to be so fun. So anyway, let's get back to it. Thanks. Oh, yeah. Can you like real quick and subscribe to the show? That would be really helpful, too. OK, let's get back to it. The aftermath of the Starship launch has raised concerns over the potential health and environmental impacts of particulate emissions. Now, while the full extent of these effects is yet to be determined, particulate emissions are regulated under the federal clean air in Texas state law due to their association with pulmonary and respiratory issues. That's your heart and your lungs. Now, environmental engineer Eric Roche has been monitoring the impacts of SpaceX's facilities for a long time on his blog at ESG How did he claims that the FAA and SpaceX did not adequately assess the environmental risks of such a massive launch. Now, Roche highlighted that the possibility of a widely dispersed plume of emissions was not disclosed during the initial permitting and approval process. And following the launch, roads were damaged and access to nearby wildlife refuge areas was restricted. 
impeding wildlife biologists and field researchers from immediately assessing potential harm. The concern is that evidence of damage to endangered species could be removed before regulators have a chance to assess it. Now, Musk announced in a tweet that a massive water-cooled steel plate, which was under construction at the time of the launch, was not ready for this test flight. He stated that the launch could be ready again in about two months. Now, this is remember, this is Elon time, and the FAA has outlined that a re return to flight for the Starship Super Heavy will require confirmation that any system, process, or procedure related to the mishap does not affect public safety. So this could take some time for the FAA to get through this so SpaceX can launch again. The FAA and Texas Regional Office of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services are still gathering information regarding the environmental impacts of this launch. SpaceX hasn't commented on this. And according to the FAA, the explosion activated an anomaly response plan, which is part of the 2022 programmatic environmental assessment completed by the company, along with state and federal agencies. And SpaceX must complete additional steps now in the environmental mitigations before launching the Starship again. Now, Jared Margolis, an attorney at the Center for Biological Diversity, believes that the FAA requirements will be minimal and easy for SpaceX to fulfill, but may not effectively safeguard local residents' well-being at endangered species. He argues that the pursuit of space exploration should not come at the expense of communities, habitats, and species. So there you have it. SpaceX could potentially launch in a few months if the FAA and the, uh, you know, the requirements are very minimal. So we're going to see what happens and just keep our ear to the ground for any news that comes up about SpaceX and Starbase. We'll bring it here on the Space News Pod. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you could take a second, hit the subscribe button. It's easy. It's free. And you get SpaceX news. You get to hang out with the cool, cool, awesome community members here at the Space News Pod. Thank you, everybody, for all of your support. I'll see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves and each other. Bye bye. Where's the off button? Does anybody know what that is? Oh, wait, we're supposed to have like a cool outro song. Do I have a cool outro song? No, but I do have this. There we go. We're just hanging out. Check this out. Check that out. We're just hanging out. That's a cool shot, dude. I shot that video. I was there, man. <laughs> dude, I was there. Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, so basically, SpaceX is going to be launching Starship again sometime. We don't know when, but they're working with the FAA and they're working with regulatory bodies to get it done. If you like that kind of stuff, there's other videos over there. I don't have half my arm now. It's gone. There's videos over that way. Check them out and also subscribe. There's probably my head up there that you can click on to subscribe. Bye, everybody. Have a good one. I'm going to hit the button.